Kenny Hill's got the reputation of uh, big plays, but also big plays on the negative side. Uh, big arm, but kind of scatter shot. Uh, obviously, a mobile guy, big, strong guy that's going to break tackles and break contain and do some good things with his legs. I, I see that he's uh, hit 18 different receivers out of this offense. So he's spreading the ball around, 69% completion percentage. So you got to feel good about what he's done. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I think a lot of that, um, you know, does go to Sonny Cumbie and Curtis Looper, who have really identified what makes Kenny Hill work in an offense. And they've really focused on putting him in those positions. But, you know, it it would be unfair to not credit Kenny Hill with a lot of it, too. He's made some significant adjustments just in his maturity and his off the field work ethic and the way that he's viewed in the locker room. Um, it's very, very obvious to me that this team feels a lot different about Kenny Hill 2017 than they did in 2016. And I think that that has a, a lot to do with their success. Um, I think one of the biggest moments of the season came in the Oklahoma State game. You know, things were starting to tighten up. Oklahoma State had gotten hot. Uh, and Hill comes out and throws an interception off his back foot and a ball that just absolutely sailed on him. It was a terrible decision and, and just a worse pass. The TCU defense comes back on the field and goes three and out. And it was very much a, hey, we got your back, buddy, kind of moment for the Horned Frogs. And I think the chemistry uh, with Kenny Hill, the way that his team values him as a leader, but then also just the chemistry overall in the locker room was completely different than it was a year ago. And a lot of that comes from the fact that the Frogs had eight seniors in 2016, and, and they've got, I think, 20-something this year. So there's just a lot of maturity, a lot of leadership on that squad, and that's paid dividends early. For Kansas State to uh, pull off the upset, they're going to have to get more production out of their pass rush. They've got no sacks out of their DNs, uh, Tanner Wood, Reggie Walker, Kyle Ball. No sacks there. They blitzed a lot against Texas and got burned because they couldn't get the traditional pass rush up front. So uh, now they also face Darius Anderson, who's one of the fastest players on the team. Uh, Kyle Hicks, of course, uh, has been around the program for a while and contributed a lot to the running game. So it's always a balanced offense that's the best way to go, and you certainly have it out of the running back position. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the most surprising things on Saturday was how little TC leaned on Kyle Hicks and Darius Anderson. Hicks has been banged up, and so we expected his touches to be limited against West Virginia. But to give Anderson and Hicks a combined 20 touches in the running game was just absurd, in my opinion. I don't know what was going on. And I think a lot of that was was maybe, uh, you know, a young play caller reading the press clippings, knowing that everybody expected the Frogs to run the ball against West Virginia because they were the 115th worst rush defense in the country going into that game. And so they tried to go away from what was expected and surprise some people. I'm hoping that they'll get back to basics this, this week. If you want to beat Kansas State, you've got to keep the ball out of their hands. With the, the offense that they run and the ball control that they have, it's super important that the Frogs keep the ball Keep, uh, keep the rushing game going and keep uh, Alex Delton off the field. Um, but I think that the point you make about the pass rush is huge. When you've got a mobile quarterback like Kenny Hill, he has struggled with holding on to the ball a little bit too long this season in some occasions. But at the end of the day, he can get out of trouble. He's been play working the short game so much. He's got so many wide receivers he can throw the ball to. That could definitely spell trouble for Kansas State's defense, a unit that has been the best against the pass in the Big 12 Conference so far but also has played Baylor in Texas. So let's, you know, hold our horses a little bit on crowning them the champions.